Welcome to the British Jews in the First World War podcast. My name is Ronnie Fraser and in this episode I am going to tell you the story of Sergeant Joseph Kemper who was the first Jew to serve in the Royal Flying Corps. Joseph was just one of 50,000 Jews who served in the British forces in World War I. In 1922 the Jewish community published all their names in the British Jewry Book of Honour which was compiled from the casualty lists published in the Jewish Chronicle, Chaplain's Records and Requests from Families. 2,485 of the 50,000 men died on active service and over 1,000 received, aw received awards and decorations including five Victoria Crosses. The story of British Jewry's involvement in the First World War is both glorious and inglorious full of bravery and the mundane. Whilst the story of the immigrants is more complicated, all sectors of Jewish society were involved, ranging from the rich and famous to the middle and working classes. The Jewish experience of the war was no different to that of other sections of British society, as all sectors of anglo Jewry lost many of their young men. Overall, 13% of the Jewish population served as against 12% of the general population. The majority of the 50,000 served in the British Army, with 2,000 in the Royal Flying Corps and only 500 in the Royal Navy. The Royal Navy intake was low because they would only accept Jewish men if both they and their parents were born in Britain. Approximately 300 Jews from Britain, Canada, Australia, New Zealand India and South Africa served in the Royal Flying Corps, either as pilots and observers, the remainder serving as technicians maintaining and repairing the aeroplanes. Joseph Kemper was born in 1886 in Odessa in Russia, where after leaving school he trained as a cabinet maker. His family had emigrated to Britain in 1903 and settled in Hull. He had not really intended to join up, but at the age of 18, like many adolescents, he had an argument with his parents and walked out of home in a bad mood. He went into town and was standing outside a shop from which a man came out and said, It's a fine life, isn't it, son? To which Joseph replied rather sarcastically, Bloody fine. What Joseph had failed to notice was that shop, the shop was an army recruiting office and before he realised it, he had signed, enlisted in the army and joined the South Lancashire Regiment. His parents could do nothing about it and that was the start of his 37 years service in the British Army, the Royal Flying Corps and the RAF. In June 1912, Joseph transferred into the newly formed Royal Flying Corps six weeks after it had been formed because his woodworking and metalworking skills were needed by the Royal Flying Corps to maintain their aeroplanes. His Royal Flying Corps number was 251 and he joined the number 2 squadron at Montrose in Scotland, which was the first aeroplane squadron in the Royal Flying Corps as number one squadron flew balloons. Even though he was a chief mechanic, he learnt to fly and was awarded his aviator's certificate number 444 in April 1913. The start of the war in 1914 was just over 10 years since man's first flight by the Wright brothers in 1903 and only five years since Louis Blériot became the first person to fly across the English Channel. To the casual observer, aeroplanes in 1914 looked as though they hadn't changed much in those ten years. They were still very basic machines, made of wood, wire and canvas, and were not able to travel very far or very fast, and certainly not in bad weather. The majority were biplanes, as the technology of the time had not developed materials that were both strong and light enough to withstand the stresses of flight. Although he didn't know it at the time when his squadron was deployed to France at the outbreak of war in August 1914, Joseph was to spend the entire war in northern France. 
Even though he was a chief mechanic, Joseph flew regularly throughout the autumn of 1914 as an observer on reconnaissance missions. From then on, his role was the maintenance of his squadron's aeroplanes. The London Gazette reported on the 24th of February 1916 that Sergeant Major Kemper had been awarded the Medal Militaire by the President of the French Republic in recognition of his distinguished service during the campaign. This was very unusual because he was an NCO and not a pilot. Nobody knows why he received this medal. However, there is a story about him which may explain why he received this award. After the Battle of Mons in August 1914, the Germans were advancing through Belgium into northern France. The story goes that at the beginning of September 1914, Kemper was on a test flight when he noticed that the German military had left the front in Verdun and was surrounding Paris from the northwest. Once he realised that, the story goes that he reached out to the French commander, Marshal Foch, and explained it to him. Foch did not believe him because it contradicted the information that he had been given by his own staff. Kemper then took Marshal Foch up in a plane and proved to him that it was true. The result was that Foch moved his army to intercept the Germans and was hailed as a hero for saving Paris. After their success, the French generals congratulated the Royal Flying Corps for their reconnaissance work. Although I have been able, unable to prove if this story is true, I would like to think that this is why he was awarded, awarded the Medal Militaire. In 1916, Joseph was commissioned as an officer and posted to the aeroplane supply depot at Saint-Omer, which was responsible for the supply and repair of all the Royal Flying Corps equipment, which included aircraft, wireless equipment and vehicles. By the end of the war, as Major Kemper MBE, he held a senior position at the Saint-Omer Aircraft Park. Joseph went on to serve in Egypt and Iraq before retiring from the RAF in 1931. During the 1920s, as senior Jewish airman in the RAF, Joseph was laid, laid the wreath on behalf of the RAF at the annual Jewish ex-servicemen armistice parades in Whitehall. In 1928, he was joined by Henry Jessel, a 97-year-old Jewish veteran who had fought in the Crimean War in the 1850s. Joseph, who supported the establishment of a Jewish homeland in Palestine, went to Palestine in 1935 as the chief engineer for Carmel Automobiles, which had just opened a factory in Haifa to assemble standard motor cars. Production was halted the following year after only 20 cars had been assembled because of the Arab uprising against British rule in Palestine. In 2014, the Israeli post office issued this stamp to commemorate the building of the Carmel cars, which were the first cars to be built in Palestine. As Joseph was one of the few Jewish pilots in Palestine, he also helped the Jewish community to train pilots. His cover story was that as Major Kemper, which, were, which was his Royal Flying Corps rank, he was in charge of the RAF base at Ramla Airfield. This, of course, was not true. Every two weeks, he travelled from Haifa to Kibbutz Deganya near Lake Tiberias, where in a roof space of a cowshed, he taught a group of young Jews the principles of flight. As Kemper was very well connected with the leaders of the Jewish community in Palestine, and because of his cover story, no one questioned him flying one of the few privately owned Jewish aeroplanes in Palestine. One day on a flight from Haifa to Atlit with one of his pupils, they had engine trouble, 
and on landing the plane got caught in the telephone wires and crashed near the Carmel station on the outskirts of Haifa. The two men escaped injury and Kemper immediately disappeared from the scene, leaving his pupil behind. Within minutes, Navy, Air Force and Red Cross vehicles appeared on the scene. Then a big black car appeared and in the car was Joseph and David Hakohen, a leading member of the Jewish community in Palestine. David used his influence with the British, some whiskey and cigarettes and a few pounds changed hands and nothing further was said about the cash, the crash. Although Joseph returned to Britain in 1938 to rejoin the RAF, the Palestine Post of 1939 noted that in the past two years he had given a number of lectures about aviation to the Haifa Aero and Gliding Club. Joseph served throughout World War II at Greenock in Scotland, having been promoted to Wing Commander and was awarded the OBE in 1944. His daughter told me that in the autumn of 1945 her father suffered a heart attack and when it was obvious he would not survive, she phoned Lord Trenchard, the founder of the RAF, who had been Kemper's commanding officer in Number 2 Squadron, to see if he could arrange for her brother, who was serving with the RAF in Kenya, to come home. Although war conditions still prevailed, he was home within 24 hours. Joseph died a few days later and was buried with full military honours at Wilsdon Cemetery in northwest London. If you enjoyed this podcast, join me again soon to hear more stories of Jewish airmen in World War One.